Welcome everyone to this brief consumer action video on distinguishing between COVID-19 vaccine fact and fiction. This video is based on the content of Consumer Action's multilingual brochure on the same topic. You can find the brochure on Consumer Action's website at the web address that appears on screen. We hope you find the video and brochure informative and also hope that it can serve as a tool to educate your community, especially if your professional or volunteer work involves community education. The brochure explains that the COVID-19 crisis has been challenging for everyone and devastating for many, and that the single most promising route back to normal life is the COVID-19 vaccine. While many millions of Americans have been safely vaccinated, millions of others have not yet gotten the vaccine, with many basing their decision not to get the vaccine on inaccurate or misleading information. This video and the brochure it's based on are designed to help overcome objections to getting vaccinated, explain why someone should get vaccinated, recognize and stem vaccine misinformation and disinformation, and know where to obtain the vaccine. The brochure explains that the internet and social media help information spread very quickly, even when the information is inaccurate or misleading. The prominence of rumors, unsubstantiated claims on Facebook feeds, on Twitter, and in biased or sensationalist media makes it more difficult to distinguish fact from fiction. The following are a few examples of common COVID-19 vaccine misconceptions. Here's the first one. I've already had COVID, so I don't need the vaccine. This is a misconception because even people who have already had the coronavirus should get vaccinated. First, the immune response after having the disease isn't as strong as the defensive response that comes from vaccination. Also, the higher antibody levels resulting from vaccination are usually associated with longer lasting protection and will provide a greater cushion of protection against some of the variants that are spreading. Here's another example. The vaccine will give me coronavirus. This is also a misconception because none of the authorized vaccines in the U.S. contain the live virus that causes COVID-19. This means that the coronavirus vaccine cannot make you sick with COVID-19. Minor symptoms following vaccination, such as fever, are normal signs that the body is building protection against the virus that causes COVID-19. Let's move to another example. The vaccine was developed so quickly, it can't possibly be safe. This is also incorrect because while it's true that the vaccine was fast-tracked in response to a global health crisis, scientists were not starting from scratch. The research behind the vaccines had been conducted over the previous decades. The money, the focus work, and the support and resources of the National Institutes of Health enabled the development of COVID-19 vaccines that are safe and effective. Here we have another example. I could have a life-threatening reaction to the vaccine. This is also not correct because a life-threatening reaction is very unlikely. Nearly 200 million people in the United States have safely received at least one vaccine dose. The U.S. Centers for Disease Control estimates that anaphylaxis, a potentially life-threatening allergic reaction, occurs in up to 11 cases per million doses. Since it usually occurs soon after vaccination, those who get vaccinated are observed for at least 15 minutes during which an allergic reaction can be treated with an EpiPen. Let's continue. The COVID vaccine will alter my DNA. This too is a misconception because both mRNA vaccines, like the Pfizer and Moderna vaccines, and viral vector vaccines, like the Johnson & Johnson vaccine, deliver instructions to our cells to start building protection against the virus that causes COVID-19. However, the material never enters the nucleus of the cell, which is where our DNA is kept. That means the genetic material in the vaccines cannot affect or interact with our DNA in any way. Here's another misconception. COVID-19 is no worse than the seasonal flu, and since I don't get the annual flu vaccine, I don't need to get this one. This is also incorrect. While it's true that some people who contract COVID-19 are fortunate to experience only mild symptoms, it is not true that the coronavirus is no worse than the flu. The CDC has found that the coronavirus spreads more easily than the flu, can cause more serious illnesses in people, 
can take longer before symptoms appear, can be contagious for longer, and can result in long-term symptoms. Let's look at the last example. I don't have insurance and I'm afraid I might get charged for the vaccination, even if they say it's free. In reality, the federal government is providing the COVID-19 vaccine free of charge to everyone who wants one, regardless of immigration or health insurance status. This is true whether you get the vaccine at a pharmacy, a community health center, or a mass vaccination site. Unless you receive other services from a healthcare provider at the time of your vaccination, such as an examination or advice for a medical issue, you will not be charged. When faced with vaccine hesitancy, experts' tips include focusing on vaccine acceptance and the benefits of vaccination, dispelling misinformation with facts, putting potential side effects in context, and avoiding shaming or arguing and politics and partisanship. The sooner the U.S. achieves herd immunity, in other words, widespread resistance to the virus, the sooner the country can get back to normal pre-pandemic life. One of the two ways to achieve herd immunity is through vaccination. The other is through infection, which unlike vaccination, carries the risk of serious illness or death. Once a large portion of the community is immune, the entire community is protected, even those who can't get the vaccine, such as infants. Over the decades, herd immunity achieved through vaccination has slowed or stopped the spread of all sorts of contagious diseases, including smallpox, polio, diphtheria, and rubella. Without herd immunity, COVID-19 will continue to be a threat, and family members, friends, and neighbors, particularly those who are elderly or have compromised immune systems, will be left at greater risk of sickness and death. Our communities, including struggling businesses, would be unable to recover from the crisis. In addition to protecting others, getting vaccinated is the best way to protect yourself, even if you have already had the coronavirus. New strains of the virus, variants, may render the natural defenses resulting from earlier infection ineffective, while the vaccines are believed to still provide a good amount of protection. And if you do contract the virus, you're less likely to experience serious illness and less likely to die. Once you're fully vaccinated, you can resume many of the activities that you did before the pandemic. While getting the vaccine is a personal choice, choosing not to get it is a personal choice that has far-reaching consequences. Every person who gets vaccinated plays a vital role in moving the country forward and helping to build herd immunity. Recognizing and stemming misinformation and disinformation. Misinformation or inaccurate information and disinformation, in other words, information that's intentionally misleading, has become more rampant. Here are some tips for vetting the information you hear and read. First, consider the source. Remember that anyone can post anything on the internet. Before trusting information you find online, check that it comes from a credible source. In the case of vaccines, trusted sources include government health agencies, such as the U.S. Centers for Disease Control, the World Health Organization, and the National Institutes of Health. Also, unbiased news outlets, such as NPR, The New York Times, The Washington Post, and CNN. And respected independent medical organizations, like the Kaiser Family Foundation, Johns Hopkins, and the Mayo Clinic. In addition, as mentioned in the fact sheet, the University of California, San Francisco, offers some tips for evaluating health information in an article on its website. And Media Bias Fact Check ranks media sources on how biased they are. Another tip for recognizing and stemming misinformation is to look for confirmation. Check if mainstream media, like major newspapers and television channels, have covered the information. If no mainstream news outlets are covering the story, odds are good that the claims are false or unproven. Online fact-checking resources such as Snopes.com and FactCheck.org can usually confirm whether a story or quote is legitimate or not. Another tip is to not trust social media for health information. 
Social media is the source of much of the disinformation being spread about vaccines. The last tip is to question whether you're getting the whole story. There is often a kernel of truth even in predominantly false claims. But be aware that biased sources often cherry-pick the data that supports their false claims, presenting information out of context or with crucial information missing. Getting the COVID-19 vaccine. The vaccine is widely available. Anyone five or older in any state is eligible to get vaccinated. To find a COVID-19 vaccination location near you, use the vaccines.gov search tool or text your zip code to 438-829 or call 800-232-0233. You'll learn the vaccination location's web address, phone number, and hours of operation, as well as the types of COVID-19 vaccines available and the next step to take to get vaccinated. You can also check vaccination availability through your state health department at the CDC web address appearing on screen, or you can get more information at participating pharmacies. This video was created as part of Consumer Action's COVID-19 educational project. You can find all project materials at the web address that appears on screen. If you wish to support Consumer Action's work, you can make a contribution online using a credit card or PayPal, or you can mail a check to the address that appears on screen. Remember also to subscribe to Consumer Action's YouTube channel. We appreciate all of your support.